Who's ready to learn to sew doll clothes? Stay tuned and we can start the process right here. All right, I know I started a sew doll clothes sewing series a couple of years ago, and I kind of bailed on it. Um, things happened. Since then, I have moved. I actually don't have the patterns that I started that series with. So we are going to start the series. I will complete it this time. and we, But we are starting fresh with new patterns and new fabrics and the whole bit. So today's video, I'm going to go over just some basics. We're going to Look at the patterns I purchased. I got three patterns on sale the other day. I'm going to talk to you about what's on the envelope, all the information on the envelope. I'm also going to go over a little bit about the tools and supplies that you will need to sew doll clothes. <clears throat> and then next week we'll talk about fabrics and I'll show you how to cut it out. So let's look at these patterns. All right, I hit up the, the Simplicity Pattern Sale the other day, and I picked out three. One of them, this one, is one I used to have, and I really liked it. It's got pajamas, it's got a bathrobe, a couple of types of pajamas and nightgowns, a bathrobe, some kind of like workout type clothes, and underpants and a little camisole and a slip. This is a fun pattern, and I'm definitely going to make at least one or two items off of this one. This one, I, the next two, in fact, I picked out because they are unisex doll patterns. I know there's a now a big popularity among doll, the doll people, both the kids and the adults, to have boy dolls. The next, this pattern and the next one both are for both girl and boy dolls. So that'll be fun. I might bring one of my boy dolls in for fitting on what, some of these. But this pattern has a hooded jacket, a other jacket, pants, shorts, and tops. A lot of fun. And this one too is unisex again. Different shirts, uh, shorts, jeans, and a skirt for the girl dolls. So that's going to be a lot of fun to play with. We'll take some items off of each one. I might pull in some more patterns before the series is over. But we're going to have fun and we're going to, I'm going to teach you guys how to sew and how to attack these patterns and know what you're doing and what you're getting into. So let me pause the camera, let me bring it down closer, and we are going to talk about all the information on these envelopes, and I'm going to talk to you about what everything means. So when you look at the pattern envelope, it, you'll know what you're looking at. You'll know what they're asking you and what they're telling you. So hang on. All right, let's start with this one. So this one, the top part, it says Simplicity. That's the brand of the pattern. This pattern is number 9032. The S just means it's simplicity. Don't worry about the S. That's not really something you need to worry about. So why do you need to know this? You need to know what the pattern company and the pattern number are to find the pattern at the fabric store. There's two ways that I've seen fabric stores sell patterns. Probably the most common is self-serve, where you can look through the catalogs at the patterns then you go over to a set of drawers, you find the correct drawer to get the pattern out of, and you pull your own pattern. The patterns are divided up by manufacturer by company name, and then they're in numeric order within those drawers. So you need to just find the simplicity drawer that has this number in it. It's pretty simple. The other information up here is it's one size. This pattern only comes in one size, and that's for 18 inch dolls. <clears throat> then you have a photo of some dolls wearing the clothes that are in this pattern. And at the bottom, it says clothes fit dolls, 18 inch. Again, they're making sure you know you're getting a doll clothes pattern. Not a people clothes pattern, a doll clothes pattern. And then a little information is made in the U.S. Pattern company has been around since 1927. Sometimes there will be a designer name on the front, front cover of the pattern. And then, of course, the barcode that they scan to charge you for the pattern. So let's turn it over and look at the back. 
All right, now keep in mind, I'm looking at this upside down so you guys can have it right side up. So I may stumble on a few things. Again, you've got S9032. That's your pattern number, so you know you're in the right pattern. It says there's 20 pieces. That means 20 pattern pieces are included in the pattern. Then right here you have line drawings of all of the things that you can make. Oh, one thing I forgot on the front, next to each outfit, there are letters. This says A, D, and G. That says B, C, and F, and so on. Those, no, those letters tell you which items you're making. So she's wearing one of these tops is piece A, one's piece D, and one's piece, and the pants are piece G. So you get back here, and those letters are underneath these drawings. So item A is a tank top. Item B is a long sleeve top. Item C is more of a shirt style. D is this short cropped one. E is a pair of shorts, it looks like. I think that's the shorts. The pants, and then probably the skirt. I could have the skirt and the shorts back backwards, because I'm look like I said, I'm reading this upside down. No, G, okay, this is shorts, this is the skirt. Then up here, again, it tells you 18 inch dolls. It tells you what fabrics you need. It tells you fabrics. A and B are sized for stretch knits only. That's important. There's two main types of fabrics. There's knits, there's wovens. <clears throat> the patterns usually can't be done. They have to be either knit or woven. They usually don't work for both. Um, this tells you you can use interlock jersey. And then it says, see, pick a knit rule. That's this bar right here. And next week we'll go into more detail on what that means. But that's simply to help you pick the knit with the right amount of stretch. Then views C, D, F, and G can be made out of broadcloth, chambray, cotton types, linen types, E in novelty sequence, and then E also needs a lining made of broadcloth. C and D can also be done in lightweight denim or pinwheel cord or fabric that I can't pronounce, especially looking at it upside down. <clears throat> then you have the list of garments, so top A you're going to need 3 eighths of a yard of 60 inch fabric. It says 60 inch fabric because most regular knits are 60 inches wide. You'll also need some uh, some hook and loop tape, which is that's the common name, the generic term for Velcro. Velcro is a brand. Top B, you need again a set amount of fabric and you need Velcro. <clears throat> and it goes on down. Now top C, that says of 45 inch or 60 inch. That's because it can be made of a woven fabric. It's not a knit pattern. It's a woven pattern. Woven fabrics come in more variety of widths. We'll talk about all that next week. And then it also needs two snaps and some buttons. And on down. So that's what all of those things mean. It's pretty simple. Let's, and we'll go over this in a lot more detail next week when we look at fabric and look at the pattern with the fabric. Let me grab some tools and I'll be right back. Alright, so here are some of the tools that you'll need to sew. Now, I'm, you'll also need a sewing machine. Um, and that won't fit here. We'll go over the sewing machine in a separate video. And you'll also need an iron and an ironing surface. Those are put away right now, so I'm not going to dig them out right now, but we'll talk about those in more detail when we get ready to sew. So let's look at what I've got here. A measuring tape. <clears throat> it's really important to measure both your doll and your pattern, and we'll use this a lot. So measuring tape is important. I have three pair of scissors here. This pair is totally optional. These are expensive. They're called pinking shears. And I'm going to show you some ways to make the, the these will help with making things look a lot more professional, but there's something that if you're a beginner, you don't need to get right away, but I still want to show you how they work. These are my fabric scissors. They're only for fabric and thread. I never cut paper with these, ever, and they are kept away from paper. This is a pair of paper scissors. They're cheap Dollar Tree scissors. I use these to cut paper with. I use them to cut out my pattern, stuff like that. <clears throat> a seam ripper. 
A seam ripper is used when you have to take stitching out because sometimes we all make mistakes. Then we have thread. You'll need thread to match your project and a bobbin to fit your machine. When we go over the machine, we'll talk more about bobbins and how they work. And then <clears throat> some sewing pins. Now my preference is a rather long pin with a big head. Um, I just have a lot more control that way. And that's used for a lot of things. It's used to put your pattern onto your fabric. It's used to hold your fabric together to stitch it. So those are the basic things you're going to need. Next week we'll talk, we'll open up the envelope of the pattern, we'll talk about fabric, we'll talk about design scale, and we'll talk about the beginning, what fitting we need to do before we start sewing, before we start cutting. So I'll talk to you next week. Bye.